Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. I'm believing that you had a a productive and incredible weekend. Good morning and welcome to our 5 540 AM discussion, right? Our 540 AM discussion. Good morning, Brand. Good morning, sis. Good morning and welcome, welcome. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning, dear. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Demetria. Good morning, my dear. So welcome this morning. Welcome. Good to see you guys this morning as we prepare to have our discussion this week. So what is it? It's December the 21st. Wow. December 21. December 21. So we have, what, 10 days left of December? Is that is it 31 days? 30? We don't have that much left, right? In this year, 2020 has come in. Yes, 31. So 10, 10 days from now, we will be going into 2021. And so what, what 10 is the countdown, right? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? 10 more days, so we can start our countdown tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. We can start our countdown tomorrow. So let's prepare, right? Prepare for the countdown um, tomorrow. But today, today, the 21st, um, so my title this morning is Life is Too Precious to Waste on Regrets. How many of us have done something that we would have preferred to have not done? Certainly me. That I would have preferred to have made a different decision. I would have preferred to not made that statement. I would have preferred to not have made that agreement. I would have preferred to not, right, have walked that path. I would have preferred to not have made those choices. Or I would have preferred to have made some additional choices. Do you see? And, um, and maybe you will notice the word that I'm using is preferred. I don't use for things like that. I don't use words like should or I ought to have because those are imprisoning words, right? And so we use words that are empowering. Like I wish that I had, I would have preferred to have done this or that because the reality of the matter is we know what we know when we know it. That's it. We know what we know when we know it. And it's not taking away from the cost of not knowing something earlier, right? There's costs and consequences, but we don't have to add to the costs and consequences. When we, when we um, belittle ourselves, when we berate ourselves, when we um, judge ourselves, when we hold our former selves accountable for what our current selves know, then we do some form of indictment. Do you see? So the consequences are going to come no matter what. That's an eternal principle of sowing and reaping. There's nothing we can do about that. But what we can do, beloved, is love ourselves today. We can give ourselves grace today. We can honor ourselves today. We can bless ourselves today. We can thank ourselves today for having the knowledge today that we didn't have yesterday. That's what we can do. Because living in a place of regrets is a further costing today for something that happened yesterday. Do you know? So we're taking the trouble from yesterday and bringing it to today and, and bringing it to bear. And so it robs us of our current and it hinders our future. Do you see? When we stay in a place of regret, we hinder our future. And so, um, 
And so life is way too precious. Way. W A W Y Y Y Y Y, right? Way too precious to live in a place of regrets. We knew what we knew then, right? And so when we look at regret, we look at the what ifs. What if there is nothing that we can do about the past, but learn from it, but learn from it, but we can't afford to live into what if. What if did not happen, could have did not happen, would have or should have did not happen. What happened, happened. Honor that. We may not like it. It may have been devastating, but honor it in the sense that recognizing that it is what it is because we can't do anything about that. We can come today, learn the lessons from the past, but don't give the past energy because when we give the past energy, it robs us. Now that is not to say that the past wasn't what it was. For some of us, it was life altering. It was life changing. It was devastating. Some, some of us, it was life giving and, and all those kinds of things. But whether it was life giving or life altering or devastating, it was, it is just that the past we must live in now. We must maximize now. We must rise now. We must have our new revelations now. We must take our next steps now. We must release it now. We must go through the door right now. Do you see? Because as long as we have regrets of the past, it costs us our now and it hinders our future, beloved. It costs us our now and we hinder our future. We've got today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We have today. Today is the 21st of December, 2020. We have never had this day before and we will never have this day again. So how incredible is this day going to be for you? How miraculous is this day going to be for you? How amazing will this day be for you? See, beloved, you get to make that choice. You get to decide what is me is today. Oh, I've got all these things ahead. This day is just going to be. Don't let it come out of your mouth. If you don't want to reap the seeds, if you don't want the seeds to be planted and you don't want to reap the harvest of the seed, don't let it come out your mouth. Don't even focus on it. Don't meditate on it. Figure out a way to put some new thinking, some new focus in your mind so that you don't sow seeds, beloved, because that's an eternal principle. Sowing and reaping is an eternal principle. <coughs> and so it's imperative that we speak from a place of possibility. How amazing, like what is going to happen today that is going to bring a tremendous smile? I can't wait right? What is that thing that's going to happen? That's going to bring a tremendous smile on my face. What is going to happen? Like what call am I going to get? Then I'm going to say, Oh my God, I've been waiting on you. I've been looking for you. This is the news I've been looking for. Do you see you position yourself to receive what you want by what you say and by what you focus your energy on and by what we meditate on. We don't have time to live in the past. It robs us. It costs too much. And beloved, I honor what has happened in the past. I honor the very, that the very difficulties and the challenges that we've had in the past. I honor that perhaps it wasn't challenged, but it was wonderful and it's not wonderful today. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes when we, we look at the glory days of the old and we look today and we don't have that same, well, regardless to whether it's a mountaintop or a valley experience, living back there is too costly. It's way too costly. We don't bring regrets to the future. We live lively in the future. We live out loud. We live in gratitude. We live in appreciation. This breath that we get to breathe every day is a gift that helps us to carry out, right? Our purpose throughout today, our each breath is a gift that carries us throughout each day to live out our purpose. Each breath, beloved, is a gift. That gift carries us out each day. We get between 17,000 and 23,000 breaths a day. Each person takes between 17,000 and 23,000 breaths. What if, what if beloved, we decided today, we're just going to say thank you for each breath at the top of the hour. Do you see? Because we can't say thank you for each breath because that's a bit a bit neurotic. That's going to, uh, you know, that's OCD. It's going to be like disruptive in our day. So, but what if today, the 21st of December, we just decided at the top of each hour when we take that breath, 
We say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the breath. Thank you for the ease in which I breathe. Thank you for the clarity that I get when I breathe. Thank you that I can lift my hands. Thank you that I can open my mouth. Thank you that I can make a decision to take another step. Thank you that I can forgive and be forgiven. Thank you that I can love and be loved. Thank you that I can walk out purpose and destiny. Thank you that I have access, right, to technology. Thank you that I can be me and I don't have to be anybody but me. Thank you for the revelation that I have. Thank you for the release that I have. Thank you for the favor that exists in my life. Thank you that I am moving in the direction that I've been called. Thank you that I can connect with people who call me to my greatness and I can hold others to their greatness. Thank you that I can dream and envision. Do you know what, beloved? See, 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 that's the thing. When you live from a place of gratitude, then you sow into gratitude. You tell God's universe, I am grateful. And just like, right, that's an answer to yes. Yes, I'm ready to receive blessings. Yes, I'm ready to grow to my next. Yes, I'm ready to extend and expand. Yes, I'm ready. I am ready, Lord. I'm ready. Do you see? So when we live from this place, time is out. Time is well spent. It's well spent giving energy to what isn't because there's so much to what is. Where are you sitting right now? Take stock of where you're sitting right now. Whatever room you're sitting, whatever car you're sitting in, whatever whatever place you're in, there are lots of things that had to come into play for you to be in that place. Do you see? For you to be there. And which means that some kind of way you got there. Somebody pushed you there. You walked there. You ran there. You rolled in there. Some kind of way you got there. That right there is enough to, to bless God. That right there is enough to, 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 to practice gratitude. That right there is enough to lift your hand and say, thank you. That I have the ability to hear. I have the ability to see, right? Whichever one we do, we have all of those. I have the ability to speak. I have the ability to lift my hands. I have the ability to, to comprehend. Whichever is our lot in life, I have that ability. I am thankful for that. The thankful person, right? What we sow into, we reap. And so the thankful person gets more things to be thankful for. Does that make sense? If we're grateful, we get more things to be grateful for. If we're begrudging, we get more things to be begrudging for. Do you see? Whatever it is that we put out into God's universe, it's going to say yay and amen to us. The universe will say yay and amen. That's the way God developed it, the way he he, he, um, created it, for it to agree with us. And so it is imperative, my beloved, imperative that we sow seeds that we want to grow, that what we plant is what we want to reap a harvest for. I want to reap a harvest of gratitude. I want to reap a harvest of joy. I want to reap a harvest of perseverance and determination. I want to reap a harvest of getting back up again when the inevitable fall happens. Because falling is inevitable. But getting back up is a choice, right? Falling is inevitable, but giving back up is a choice. I want to reap the benefit of getting back up again, of building my get back up muscle, of building my ability to, 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 res, to, re, to, to be resilient, be, building my ability to rebound, building, building my ability to have fortitude, building my ability to say, come what may, I'm going to do what I've been put on this earth to do, no matter what, I am going to be who I've been called to be. I'm not apologizing. I'm not stepping back. I'm not going to pretend. I'm not going to mask. So what am I going to do? Let's talk about it like that. I'm going to walk in authenticity. I'm going to walk in freedom. I'm going to walk in liberty. I'm going to show up as me. I'm going to show up and say, hey, this is me. I am always going to be on a path of of, um, of, um, of growth and expansion, improving. I'm always going to be on that path. It doesn't mean I'm going to do everything right. There's going to be some marks that I miss, some steps that I that I that I that I don't take correctly, right? That's going to happen. That's life. That's a part of the human condition. I expect that. But I expect a course correct every time. 
I expect to stop and say, Kathy, okay, what we doing? What we need to do? What will we need? You know, what, what's the next step? I expect to, to be held accountable and to hold you accountable. I expect that we will walk out greatness, that we will not walk in pretense, but that we will walk in the sheer essence of who we are, that we will do our work. I expect that we will do our work. That whatever we need to do to add the value to us so that we can expand to go to our next. Look, every round goes higher and higher. If we wanted to, to, to climb um, Mount Kilimanjaro, if we wanted to climb Mount Everest, if we wanted to go through any of the Appalachian mountain chains and, and, and make our way to the top of anything, we've got to prepare and we've got to persevere. And so it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be just a smooth trail. There's no elevator ride to the top, not an elevator, not an escalator, not a chairlift, none of that to our greatness. It takes perseverance, step after step after step after step after step after step after step. Determination that when we misstep and we fall down, guess who getting back up? I am. Guess who gonna say, you know what? That didn't work. Let's try it again. Guess who who get who more and more every day okay with mistakes? Okay and okay with falling short. It's so imperative that we are so we can get the help that we need. Because as long as we pretend like we got it all going, that we got it all, we can't. Other people won't help us. If you don't say you need help, you won't get it. If someone comes to help you and you say, no, I got it. Like two year olds, I got it. No, thank you. Then you won't get the help that you need. You will stay on the island that you created for yourself. Do you see? And then you're going to feel bad because no one comes to your island. But love it, you haven't invited them to the island. As a matter of fact, when they came to the island, you told them to get off. You told them, I got this. Knowing that you're drowning in, in what you, in, you're drowning in your whatever. Do you see? So beloved, I am inviting us today very strongly and intently, right? Intensely as well, inviting us to lay them down, lay down the pretense, lay down the mask, lay down the shero and the hero complex, lay it down and simply be, because it is in that place of being that we can rise, in that place of being that we can, that we can be encouraged, in that place of being that we can strengthen, in that place of being you can see what your needs are, in that place of being. I've had this, I've had about seven months of a challenge of struggle with this mindset that I had, right? That came from my childhood. I didn't even know it was there, right? And I didn't even know it. So just, it, it, it ties to a core belief of helplessness and basically living in poverty, seeing the dominant culture and nothing look like me, nothing, that whole kind of thing. And thinking that I wouldn't be able to da 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 that whole kind of thing. Right. And so, and so the thing, the thing that worked for me is I'm okay with, I've learned, I love learning. Even if the learning hurts, even if the learning is feels like it costing me something. When I realized that there was something that needed to be unearthed and unpacked, I didn't run from it. I didn't pretend. I just kept saying, okay, Kathy, what is that? Why, why is it every time you have this conversation about money, you, uh, what is that? What is that? What, what is that? Because you don't live in poverty now and you haven't. You haven't in your adult life. So what is that? What is it really attached to? I hadn't been put, I hadn't been put in a situation that, that required me to go deep enough to unearth it, to release it, to walk it out. Do you see what I'm saying? And so I'm not that girl who believes in pretense. I am not her who believes in hiding this thing and putting on a mask and a face. I'm going to talk about all of it. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm going to talk about all of it because I'm not pretending that I got it all together. I'm not pretending that I have the answers, but what I do know is that I am added value and that there are places, there are places and people who my voice and my presence, my gifting that God has given me in this season of life is their answer for this season. Not for every season, not for the rest of their lives. We live in seasons, beloved, and you better know the signs and you better know the seasons. Do you see what I'm saying? And so I know for sure that even with my core belief that I have to unearth, and it's not a core belief anymore. I understand that I am powerful. I understand that I get to make choice. I understand that I am my own rescue, that I don't have to wait for somebody to come on a right horse or in a, 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 a whatever it is, you know, Santa Claus, whatever it is that I used to 
like believe or hope that some kind of way this thing would work out for me. No, 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 no. It's going to work out, Kathy, when you put one foot in front of the other. It's going to work out when you come up with a strategic plan. It's going to work out when you walk with your fear and don't let your fear immobilize you. It's going to work out when you pick up a phone and you dial somebody, when you call and you negotiate. That's how it's going to work out. It's going to work out when you say, I'm done with this. Today, forevermore, these Egyptians you see today, you will see again, no more, henceforth and forever. Do you see what I'm saying? That's when it's going to work out, believe, beloved. So I'm calling you. I am calling you. I don't know what I want to say. I am calling you. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm calling you out. That's not what I'm doing because I'm not really a call out kind of person. I don't, don't, don't call me out. Okay. Just have a conversation with me. I'm calling you to your greatness. How about that? I'm calling you, I'm, I'm holding you accountable. That's what I'm doing. I'm holding you accountable. I'm calling you to your greatness. And I'm calling you to say, let's not live in a place of regrets. And the way that we do that, beloved, is we go on and take the steps today. We go on and we take the steps today. And when we do that, we will not live in a place of regrets. We will not. Because we will be okay with falling short. It's a part of the human condition. Because we know if we fall short, right? If we fail, we fail forward. We ask ourselves, what do we do well? And what is it that we need to do better? Like, what are the two things we do well? And what is the one thing we need to improve, right? We don't major on, well, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. Well, what did you do? Because you did something. In order to fail, you had to be in movement. The only time that you don't fail is when you're not in movement, right? If you're not in movement, be in movement, be in motion, be intentional, beloved. Be intentional. And let's look, let's lay, a, lay aside the need to, be, to care about the good opinion of other people. Let's lay aside that goop, right? The good opinion of other people, it will immobilize us every time. What is your opinion about you? That's what matters. What is your opinion about your next step? That's what matters. What is your opinion about your goal and your belief to achieve? That's what matters. What is your opinion? Look, and of course, now when I talk about this, at my core is honor. At my core is love. At my core is compassion. At my core is empowerment. At my core is community. So when I talk about not being concerned about the opinion of other people, I am not saying a disregard for, for I'm not saying a disregard for people. I am saying the whole people pleasing thing. I am saying worried about what somebody gonna say worried about people disagreeing with you, have the conversations, beloved, but do what you need to do because everyone may not understand the next step you need to take. Everyone may not get what it is that you've been called to do. Honor them, always honor, because you know what? We reap what we sow. So if you dishonor, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what other people are doing. It's about what I do. So if somebody dishonors me, I'm not going to dishonor back. I am not. I'm not ever going to be a doormat. It's not in my personality to be a doormat. But I can be empowered. I can hold my ground and not dishonor, right? Because whatever we give out, it is coming back. So even when I need to hold somebody accountable for the fact that they dishonored me, for the fact that they've acted unseemly, for the fact that they have crossed boundaries, I'm going to do it in a way that what I give out, I want to get it back. I want to get it back. So you won't ever have to see me cursing somebody out and giving them a piece of my mind. It is not the way in which I live because I understand sowing and reaping. I don't want to be cursed and I'm not going to curse myself with my own mouth. I refuse to do it. Do you see? And so, that was a lot, huh? <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. Okay, so, in full transparency, I stayed up all night reading a book, so I haven't been to sleep. So I guess this will happen when I, when I come. I love learning. I love reading. I love learning. I love growing. I love expansion. I love sharing, right? What I, because when we grow, we grow together. 
So I love it. So I guess this, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen a little bit later. Let me give me a drink of water. <laughs> So, I, I was on the phone last night, and I got off the phone, and I, about 10.30, I think, came upstairs to get in the bed with my hubby, and uh, I, laid down for, I laid down for about maybe 10 minutes, and I got up. He's like, where are you going? I was like, I think I'm going to go finish my book, and it took me to 4.30 this morning to finish the book. So, here you have me straight out of diving deep. I love learning. I do. I love growing. I love expansion. I love loving, right? So, the, because of what I read causes me to love better. It feeds me to help me to love me better, to help me to love you better, to help me to walk out my calling, to help me to stop being in my head and second guessing and whatever helps me to go on and get version one out there and not, not to get stuck in places. Right? So anyway, that's it. Hey, Christian. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. Good morning, Leticia. Don't curse yourself. Uh, what's the book It's powerful power, powerful power. When I say it's powerful, I got so many books I'm reading, y'all. I'm reading all these, too. All these. I'm reading these as well. <laughs> I'm going to take a, a Saturday. Uh, I'm going to take a weekend and just read. Just read, read, read. I love it. Right? And, of course, I, I got to get me a new one of these. This is my Bible. It's my Bible, so clearly I read that. You know, it's I'm gonna get I'm get a new one for for Christmas. But you know, I'm buy, I'm gonna buy me a Bible, and um, so I read this every day, every day, every day, and everything else is augmented. Everything else augments, right? Doctor James, you should post a list of books you're reading. Okay, I certainly will. I, I certainly will, my dear. Yes, stop cursing yourself. Yana, love learning. Yes, 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 yes. Um, hey, Brynn. Hey, Brynn. Some people are uncomfortable when we shine brighter. Too bad I will no longer let that limit. That's right. They're uncomfortable, but this is the thing, Christian. As we shine, we give them permission to shine, right? Some people, like, have never had it modeled, like, for people who really shine. They've seen people who are, like, um, bragging and kind of the narcissistic and that kind of thing, not a real shine, um, a counterfeit, whatever it is. But when they see us who shine, our shine makes space for other people to shine. When we have authentic shining, authentic brilliance, what it does is it illuminates space for other people to come in and join us there, right? Um, Learn to lay aside the good opinion of other people. What is your opinion of you? That's what matters. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. I got some dancing. Yes, don't major on the minors. Do not. No regrets. None. Let them go. Let them go. They're, they're, they're chains and, and, and bonds, bonds or whatever. They're, let them go. Just let release them. Today is a new day. Yes, it's a new day. I am my own rescue. I have not always known that. I have not always known that. But I am my own rescue, right? I am my own rescue. I'm not saying that I'm an island. And I, I, I am not saying that I don't need anybody. Let me just say clearly, I am my own rescue, but not alone. I am predominantly, just like I started my own party, it's a party that invites other people, right? I am my own rescue. I've got to initiate it. I've got to be the driving force. I've got to be the captain, but I don't do it alone. We need one another. We need one another, right? Uh, okay. Ooh, we, that girl, Dr. Kathy is on. Hello, Andrea. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Unearthing, believe in our greatness. We are all divine. Yes. The Joy, let me see. The top is not handicap accessible, so you have to put it the work to get to the top. Have to put in the good morning, Joy. Good morning. Good morning. Absolutely. We got to put in the work to get to the top. Walking in pretense keeps you from getting the help that you need. There's no elevator ride to the top. No elevator ride to our greatness. 
That's right. That's right. Walk in the sheer essence of who you are and do it unapologetically. Falling is inevitable, but getting back up, it is a choice, beloved. It's a choice. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Zeta. Good morning, Zeta. The universe will say yes and amen when you are more grateful. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. When you live from a place of gratitude, you sow um, from the place of gratitude. Yes. I woke up stressed. Say thank you for my lights. Thank you for my running water. Thank you for my coffee. Thank you for all my convenience. Felt so much better. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Good morning, sunshine. Thank you for every breath used today to remind you of ourselves, how blessed we really are. Sending light and blessings to everyone. Amen. Amen. And it's an amazing group. I believe in the power of intention. Absolutely. If you don't want to reap the harvest of the seed, don't let certain things come out of your mouth. Stop it at the thought. Stop it at the thought. All right, beloved. All right. Have, a, have an absolutely incredible day. An incredible day, right? An incredible day. It's your choice. It's your choice. At the moment in which Abba gave us his breath, we forfeited the right to not be amazing. You're amazing. Have a fantastic day. Talk to you soon. I send love to you and grace and peace. All right? Countdown starts tomorrow. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2021. All righty, all righty.